to share the cost of living in Osaka, Japan. One, two, three, oh. Aloha! We are Kencho Quest. We travel to open our minds and our hearts. Let's express around the world! First step, in case you're not familiar, where is Osaka? Good question. Osaka is located in the southern part of Honshu in the Kansai region. And it's a great location because it's near Kyoto, Nara, and even Kobe. Makes it super easy to take side trips to those neighboring tourist destinations. Which is one of the reasons we like it so much. Now what are some other reasons people might want to stay in Osaka? Cost of living. It is definitely cheaper than living in Tokyo. And there's a ton of playgrounds and entertainment. Let's hear from our son why he likes Osaka. I like the slides outside of Kids Plaza. And I like mochis. Now let's dive right into the cost of living. First category, renting an apartment through Airbnb. The reason why we recommend an Airbnb is chances are you're going to be doing short-term rental, which means between one and three months. And if you are staying longer term, let's say a year or longer, it gets quite complicated, but we will get into the details of that in a minute here. So our Airbnb was a one bedroom unit, but we liked it a lot because it was an excellent location about 10 minutes away from the train station. We paid about $925 and it was brand new. If you want to see all the details of that apartment after you're done watching this video, you can hop on over and watch our minimalist Japanese apartment tour video. Also included with the Airbnb was a Wi-Fi hotspot, which is pretty common because it's kind of complicated to get a SIM card. In Japan, it's getting easier, but what I recommend is Google Fi instead because it works worldwide and your data just works. So we use that as well. But with the Wi-Fi hotspot that came, it included 30 gigs per month, which is really nice to have that as an extra backup. Also, all the utilities were included, and it also came with a watcher, which is really nice, so we can just hang up our clothes outside or if it rained a lot, we kind of cheated and just hung our clothes in the bathroom and turned the heat on in there. There's a special dryer setting that you can use in the bathroom, so that worked really well. If you're going to rent for a year or longer, this is where it can get more complicated. It can even be more complicated for the short-term ones. That's why I recommend Airbnb or a similar service. So let's talk more about long-term. If you're renting long-term, first of all, the Japanese in general don't like to rent to foreigners. So because of that, there is something called a guarantor fee that you would have to pay and that is usually equal to one month's rent. In addition, there's something called a key fee which is illegal in most countries, but that also is something that you pay to the owner of the building and you don't get that back and that's usually equal to one month's rent or even more as well. Let's give you an example of two bedroom units. Now these are in comparison to other places that we have rented in Southeast Asia, so I wanted to find something that was about 60 square meters and also that was at least two bedrooms because we have a family of four. Well, five now. What are some rental options if you want to avoid all those costly fees? That's an excellent question and luckily there are some good options out there. One of them is called Oyo Life and the other one is called Sumo. Uh, we'll put links to both of those websites below, but what they allow you to do is search for apartments that don't have key fees or guarantor fees or other realtor fees so it can help you keep your costs down and they are also Corner friendly. This first one I'm showing you is from Oyo Life. As you can see, this unit is renting for 104,000 yen per month. That is, let's say, about a thousand dollars a month. Take a look at this diagram here. This is really important because you're going to see a lot of this. Right in the center, it says LDK. That stands for Living, Dining, and Kitchen Area. And usually, what that means is that there are separate rooms. So in this particular case. It is a two LDK, that means it has two separate bedrooms and the living, dining, and kitchen area is in one common place. And you can also notice that there are some numbers in there. So if you look at the top right corner, there's a six and below that in the green one, there's another six and where it says LDK, there it says 12. What that means is how many tatami mats can fit in those areas. So if you look at the green one, you can count that there are one, two, three, four, five, six of those mats. Also of note, the chances are you're only going to get one bathroom. If it comes with a washer, you're really lucky. Most cases, at least what I've seen, is that you will have to supply your own. This next unit is newer and costs a little bit more, but I like it because it has a more modern layout. And check out this elevator parking garage system. 
kind of cool, but it would take you a very long time to get your car if you had to wait for the next person or if yours was underground. And also what I really like about this website is that it has this community section where people can leave reviews and comments about the area or the unit itself to give you a better idea of what it's like, especially if you have kids or if it's kid friendly. Now to be clear, if you want to rent long term, which means a year or longer, and you're going to rent at least a two bedroom unit, then that average cost is about 142,000 yen. In this chart, I am showing you that out of these four places, Kuala Lumpur, Bangkok, Osaka ranks third with a rent near $1,400 a month. And just for fun, I put Honolulu down there, which is over 2K per month. The next category is food. A lot of people have the impression that it's super expensive to eat in Japan, but we'll give you some tips on how you can eat out for cheap. A good example is if you like sushi, there is a restaurant chain called Kura Sushi, which is actually all over Japan and actually in the United States now, except it's much cheaper in Japan. So most of the dishes are 100 yen, which is a little bit less than a dollar and it comes with two pieces. Another example is to eat out at beef bowl places or even your local izakayas and stuff. The key is to stay away from the very touristy areas and then you can really eat economically. Our son loves going to the beef bowl restaurants, especially because if you get the kids meal, it comes with a little toy and you can collect the whole set. It's kind of like getting a happy meal, but with real food. So we can feed a family of four easily for under $25 by going to eat at beef bowl. And also even going to a local izakaya or even just a local restaurant, we can usually eat for under $30. You're just going to want to avoid the super touristy spots and tourist trap restaurants. Also, we don't drink alcohol, so that really helps keep the cost down. Another inexpensive option is Hotomoto that offers takeaway simple bento meals. That's great like when you're tired, you just want to grab something and take it home with you. There are also vending machines everywhere. So if you just want to grab a drink, you can get one for about 100 to 140 yen. They are literally everywhere, even just like across the corner from where we were staying, there was one. And some of them also have food. So if you're looking for ice cream or a little snack, just hit up a vending machine. Yeah, go around the corner. <laughs> the next section within food is groceries. And if you're choosing local items, local vegetables and foods, it's really not that expensive. There are plenty of grocery stores to choose from. And what's interesting about Japan in general is that grocery stores are kind of local. So like here in the United States, we have like Safeway, which is everywhere. Well, in Japan, they don't really have too many like that. I think Eon is the main one, which is also a department store, but so in Osaka, they have Eon, which is more of a higher end one. There's also Life Market, APRO, and many, many others. Here are some examples of cost of groceries if you buy them in a grocery store. Cabbage, 198 yen. Kyori, which is the local type of cucumber, 250 yen. Yakitori, or we call it chicken on a stick, <laughs> 128 yen. Rice ball, which is omisubi about 128 yen. So those are both options for a really cheap lunch that we could pick up at the grocery store for our kids and they'd be happy to eat it at home. A uh, large Haas avocado, 298 yen. Karage rice bento, so that's with the fried chicken, 498 yen. Large sushi platter, about 1,000 yen. We'd also often pick up some sushi and some mochi to take home for a cheap, easy lunch. Small bag of mikan, 298 yen. What is that? Oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Two fancy beaches, 398 yen. Now the fruit can get expensive. Some fruit, they take such care in growing it, wrapping each one individually, making sure it's so perfect that the prices can get quite pricey if you're getting one of those really specialty fruits. So whenever we see something really nicely packaged, we just skip it. One time we ate at a Japanese restaurant and the dessert came with half a grape each, just to give you an idea of how That's pricey great. these fruits can be. We got half a grape. So in general, if you're buying the local Japanese food, either the vegetables they grow there, or the types of food they eat, or even the already prepared food that you can take away, it's pretty affordable. Some of the things that are going to be more expensive are like imported yogurts, cheese, wines. In addition to those larger grocery stores, there are tons of mini marts really easy to access. So 7-Eleven, Family Mart. Family Mart is really great in general. There aren't a whole lot of ATMs in Japan. 
So go to the Family Mart because they usually have one and it usually works. Also, they usually have clean restrooms and free Wi-Fi. The next category is entertainment and there's plenty of that in Osaka, Japan. We're looking mostly for family type stuff. So for us, there's Kayukan, which is the aquarium it is amazing. It's the most amazing aquarium we've ever been to. And the cost I think is pretty reasonable. It is 2,550 yen for an adult and 1,300 for a child. But I think if they were under five or something, they were free. So our son didn't pay at that time. And there's Kids Plaza, which is super awesome. It, it, it's a little dated, but it's still super awesome for kids to play and get their energy out. And outside there's an awesome, awesome park with some crazy slides where, you know, our kids just had a blast there and they could spend days and days and days there. The cost of Kids Plaza is 1,400 yen for adults and kids that ranges between 5 and 800 yen depending on their age. Osaka Castle is 600 yen for adults. Kids are free. I, I think again that was under 8 or something like that. They were free. For more on these entertainment options, be sure to watch our video on our son's favorite things to do in Osaka, Japan. And let's not forget that there's tons of free playgrounds. Sometimes our kids would be just as happy spending a few hours at a playground, making friends with some local kids as they are going to a paid attraction. And then, you know, if you don't have kids or if you want to go out at night, make sure you check out Namba in the Dotonbori area. There's tons of restaurants, tons of bars, just a lot to do, and even just sightseeing out there. And we were able to walk over to that area from where we were staying. The next category is transportation. There's basically two, well, three forms of transportation. You could walk, which would be ideal, so try to live in a very walkable place. Or two, take the train or a taxi. Our favorite was either walking or taking the train. Whenever you get on the train, you're gonna spend, I'd say, a minimum of $2, which usually it costs at least 210 yen to go anywhere, even to go one stop. So that's about $2. Now here are some prices of some other locations that you wanna to go to. And this is based on usually taking the Osaka Loop, which is a circle around the city. Tokyo has something similar. Here are some prices. We were living near Bentencho Station, so for, to go from there to the city of Nara cost 850 yen per person. To go to Kyoto Station was 800 yen per person. And again, this is for adults. Kids under five don't have to pay. Osaka Castle, 230 yen. And to go to the Namba area is 230 yen. Or walk, like we did. It took us about an hour. And if you need to take a taxi, which is very, very useful sometimes, especially if you have a family of four people or something like that, then the cost could be pretty economical. I would say it's even cheaper than Uber or taking Lyft here in the United States. I hope that shows you that Japan doesn't have to be prohibitively expensive. To us, it's a better cost of living than places like Honolulu, Hawaii or Santa Monica, California. In the future, we'll be making an episode of Cost of Living in Tokyo to give you a comparison. And also, I think I'll explain more about what all these fees are involved. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you will know when that's coming. You can also watch our playlist of Cost of Living in Southeast Asia to see cities like Bangkok, Saigon, Kuala Lumpur. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more travel tips and inspiration.